the love of God, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. It was in the waters of baptism that Vern died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. And there are two times in our life where the church places a white garment upon us, that it clothes us in white. The first is at our baptism, when we are immersed in the waters and we rise a new creation in Christ. The second is at our funeral, when we place a white pall on our casket that reminds us even in death, we live in Christ. So I invite the grandchildren at this time to place that white pall on the casket of their grandfather. And now let us bring Vern into the heart of our community. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people's cry, all who dwell sin my hand will save I who made the stars of night I will make their darkness bright who will bear my light to them whom shall I send here I am Lord here of stone give them hearts for love alone I will speak my word to them whom shall I send here I am Lord is it I Lord I have heard you call Friends, in life, Vern cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. And to represent that life lived in faith, I now invite Kay to come forward and place that book of the gospels and crucifix onto the casket of her father. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant Vern, whom you have called out of this world. And because he put his hope and his trust in you, command that he be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you all to be seated at this time. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us other destruction. But they are at peace. For if before people, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right path. For his name's sake, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are by my side, with your rod and your staff, that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose. So too will God, through Jesus, bring with him 
those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of God, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. First of all, on behalf of Father Carl, on behalf of Dick, on behalf of the entire parish, Jan, Dan, Kay, Renee, the grandkids, family, our love, our blessings, our support, our prayers, our condolences uh, during this time of grief and pain and loss and separation. Um, you're surrounded by wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, never forget that we, we don't do this alone. We, uh, we walk with one another. And as Michelle and Wendy just said to us, our God walks through that dark valley with us too. You know, we are on December the 18th, one week from today, 
we will be celebrating Christmas, our God coming to us. And our Advent wreath shows we're almost there. And over the course of that Advent season, we've heard from the usual suspects. The prophet Isaiah has shown up a lot in the readings as we prepare. John the Baptist has been telling us to prepare the way, you know, take the mountains down and raise the valleys so God can come soon. And this weekend, we're going to hear from Mary as the Archangel Gabriel visits her and invites her into the plan. And we'll talk about Elizabeth. And all these are wonderful and good stories and appropriate enough that we hear from all these people. But there's one person that I find conspicuously lacking in our weekend readings as we prepare. And that is Joseph. We don't talk about Joseph a lot. And so I ask myself, why is it that we don't? Well, I think the first answer is because Joseph isn't in scriptures an awful lot. You know, he's only there sometimes in the early part. And then after Jesus reaches the age of 12, we don't hear about him at all anymore. But yet, I would argue, Joseph's yes was every bit as important to Christ being born into this world as Mary's. But I think the second reason, now this is my opinion, I think the second reason is equally as important. Why don't we hear about Joseph as much during this time? Because I think Joseph didn't want us to. I think Joseph was content to sit in the background and just enjoy and nurture and love and laugh at and respect and build up the life that was around us. And anytime people would look at him and say, Joseph, look how great this is, I think he would just as quickly point at Mary or even more quickly point at Jesus and say it's about him. He was content to be behind. This week, since Monday morning, I learned of, of the death of Vern and was able to be with you. And as I was praying about today, the life of Joseph kept coming up in my mind similar to the life of Vern. Because I think the two are similar. I think Vern was content to sit in the background and point to you, Jan, to point to you, kids, to point to you, grandkids, and revel in the life that was going on. But yet his yes, his yes was equally as important to allowing Christ to be born, love to being born, life to being born in the world, for without his yes, this isn't here. This isn't happening. Our world is better because of Vern Casper. So what did that love, what did that life look like? Jan, first and foremost, it looked like you. You know that. His love for you was deep and wide. 56 years. It looked like waltzing and polkaing on Friday nights. It looked like being in a bowling league together and everything in between. Building a family and building a life together. You were first and last. <clears throat> and if, Jan, you were one, number one, one A, would have been Dan and Kay, Renee, when you came into the picture, and then the six that are sitting behind you, because family was it. The children and the grandchildren. Kay, you said something. Forgive me if I don't say it uh, well, but, oh gosh, I, I, you had a, a, a phrase. Oh, and I'm going to miss it. But it was that idea that he didn't like to do something on his own. That he, he, he loved people being with him. And so he would invite people into doing that, first and foremost, those who were around here, to being a part of his life because he wanted his life to be a part of your life and your life a part of his life. You know, again, he was content to be in the background, but he loved, he was such a social person. He loved being around people. 
And they loved being around him. And so that was his way of just being a part of their life and inviting them into his. Whether it was on the farm or in sports or whatever it was. Come and watch me tinker and hand me the wrench if that's all it's going to be, but we'll do it. That yes uh, of his looked like service. It looked like service to our country. We have some naval gentlemen in the back who at the end of this funeral liturgy will come and we'll honor Vern with military right as he served for three years in the Navy. That yes, and that service didn't stop there. He served this community, this region, this area. As an electrician, <clears throat> he served this parish for years. That yes looked like the importance of extended family, his siblings, how important they were to him and being close to them, even though he liked to pick on his sister. That's what I'm told. That uh, life that he got from the hobby farm that you talked about, raising the crops and the steers, as long as the steers stayed in the fence and not on your front lawn. <laughs> um, and that life that he got from playing and watching sports, and he was good at both, and, uh, and, and playing cards. I understood, now again, Jan, these are your words, but uh, he enjoyed playing sheep's head and poker, and if you, if you set Vern, it was a good night, or if you took his money, it was a good night, because he didn't often lose or didn't like to, and he just, again, just loved to laugh with people and tease and be teased. It, that whole idea of what I think of him, and I knew Vern for the last 10 years. You guys would sit right over here. In fact, this is a different spot for you right now, Jan. You, right over here, and he always had those smiling eyes, and that handsome grin. And, uh, and he was just such a gentleman and a good man. I think, Kay, you even mentioned how, you know, again, I, I call that charismatic. He had just something about him that people were attracted to. But at Willow Park, even during his short stint there, how they fawned over him. And he was such a sweetheart, they called him. Again, this gentle good man, a, a gentle breeze, in a sense, of our life. I'm not trying to canonize your father, your grandfather today. As much as the rest of us, he's in need of God's grace. We all are, because that's what gets us through. But I love that comparison to Joseph, because Joseph's yes to Mary and her yes to Gabriel both of their yeses together brought forward life, the life that is God on this, on this earth. I think Vern's yes to you, Jan, and your yes to him brought forward the life that is around you and made the world better. It, it produced love and life through those yeses. And yes, where there is love, there is God. That's what scripture tells us. And, uh, and that yes, it, it, it just made things, it made us better. And we trust this man who said yes to God, and God said yes to him, because again, that life, right, that only comes from one place. He had to open himself. If you received life from him, it's because he, he opened himself to it, so it, it could flow through him to you. But I want to go back to these readings that, Kathy, you read for us today. That first one, because we trust Vern now to God. And that first reading starts out this way. It says, the souls of the just are in the hands of God. Now remember, the souls of the just. Your father was an incredibly just man. Your husband, your grandfather. The souls of the just, of those good men and women. The souls of the just are in the hands of God. And no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead and they're passing an affliction, but they are in peace. But they are at peace. If that wasn't enough, brothers and sisters, the first part of this Thessalonian readings is, is one of my favorite in all of scripture. But it says this, Paul is talking to a small church, far smaller than even we gathered here. And he's saying this, he says, 
my friends, I don't want you to be unaware about those who have fallen asleep, about those who have died, so that you may not react like the world who has no hope, who says that's the end. So that's what he's telling us. He says, don't be like them who don't have hope. He says, here's our hope. For if we believe that Christ died, that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Christ, bring with us, bring with uh, with him those who have fallen asleep. What he's saying is, if this is true, if all the death in the world tried to put out this light that is Christ, but it couldn't, then you and I, brothers and sisters, who are baptized into that light, we are baptized into his death, which is what we're experiencing today, that hurt, that sorrow. But we're baptized into his life, too. And so Jesus was the first fruits of that, just as God raised Christ to, 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 the, to the glory of God the Father. So, too, will he raise us, and that is our hope with Vern today, because we are baptized into his life. We are baptized into his resurrection as well. And we thank God for that. This man, in many ways, I think is the same same as Joseph. He helped give birth to Christ. He enjoyed pointing and nurturing at everything else and loved watching it and reveled in it. Last thing I'll say, this year, just three weeks ago, Pope Francis dedicated this year, so on the first Sunday of Advent, dedicated it to St. Joseph. This whole year will be dedicated to him. For those who were blessed enough to know this man for a long period of time, every year we knew Vern was a year with St. Joseph. 82 years with this man helped us understand St. Joseph. May St. Joseph and our God hold him close in God's great grace and love until we, Jan, kids, grandkids, can be present with him as well. Amen. And now, my friends, I invite us to stand as we bring our intentions before our loving God. And our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Vern, that he may now rejoice in the glory of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family, relatives, friends, and associates of Vern, that our tears of sorrow may one day become tears of joy when we are reunited with him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who cared for Vern in his last days, especially the staff at Willow Park Place, that they may realize how much their efforts were appreciated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died with no one to weep for them or miss their presence, that they be especially welcomed into the loving embrace of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us here today, that we be given the grace of a peaceful death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we make all these prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we prepare the table with the gifts of Christ.
with an everlasting love I have called you and you are mine I have loved you with an everlasting love I have called you and you are mine pray my friends that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Please stand and remain standing during the Eucharistic prayer. Loving God, mercifully receive the offering we trustingly present to you for the soul of your servant Vern that through this offering, which you ordain as the one true remedy for all, you may grant him everlasting salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, God, our Father. You made us to live for you and to live for each other. We can see and speak to one another. We can become friends and we can share our joys and our sorrows. You are the living God. You have called us to share in your life and to be happy with you forever. You raised up Jesus, your son, the first among us to rise from the dead, and you gave him new life. You have promised to give us new life also, a life that will never end, a life with no more anxiety or suffering. And so, Father, we gladly thank you. With everyone who believes in you, with the saints and angels, we rejoice and praise you in song. Loving God, you are holy. You are kind to us and to all. For this, we thank you. We thank you above all for giving us your Son, Jesus the Christ. You sent him into this world because people had turned away from you and they no longer loved each other. But he opened our eyes and our hearts to understand that we are brothers and sisters and that you are father of us all. He brought us the good news of life to be lived with you forever in heaven. He showed us the way to that life, the way of love. And he himself has gone that way before us. He now brings us together to one table and he asks us to do what he did. Father, we ask you to bless these gifts of bread and wine and make them holy. Change them for us into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. On the night before he died for us, he had supper for one last time with his disciples. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends, saying, Take this all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
In the same way, he took a cup of wine, he gave you thanks, and handed the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. God, our Father, we remember with joy all that Jesus did to save us. And in this holy meal, which he gave as a gift to his church, we remember his death and resurrection. Almighty God, accept us together with your beloved Son. He willingly died for us, but you raised him to life again. Jesus now lives with you in glory but he is also here on earth among us now. One day, he will come in glory, and in his kingdom there will be no more suffering, no more tears, no more sadness. Father in heaven, you have called us to receive the body and blood of Christ at this table and to be filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Through this sacred meal, give us strength to please you more and more. Lord our God, remember Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, and all other bishops, priests, and deacons, and all your holy people around the world. Help all who follow Jesus to work for peace and to bring happiness to others and bring us all at last together with Mary, the mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband, all the saints with Vern to live with you and to be one with Christ in heaven. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Dear friends, we prepare our hearts now to come to this welcome table by praying as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Loving God, deliver all of us from everything that is evil, and grant us peace today, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. 
Let us share that peace with those around you. Be still. My dear friends, this is the Christ who came into this world to teach us by his every word and his every action how much our Father in heaven loves each one of us. Happy are we who are called to his welcome table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us everlasting life.
Please remain seated during the prayer after communion and the final prayer. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly ask you, Almighty God, for the soul of your servant Vern, that freed from the bonds of mortality, he may join the company of the redeemed through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And my friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Vern. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Jesus, take you home. May you have eternal rest. May you dwell forever in God's peace. May you live in eternal light. Come home, come home. Almighty God, we commend the soul of Vern, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to remain seated at this time as we honor Vern's service to our country with military rights.
Please stand. And in peace now, let us take our brother Vern to his final place of rest. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home. come home why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading pleading for you and for me why should we linger and heed not his mercies mercies for you and for Calling for you to come.